In this video, I want to go through and try to prevent a little bit of cheating. So currently, well, let me rephrase that. Here soon we're going to be kind of redoing our inventory so it's uh, stack based instead of having duplicates. Like for example, if I duplicate the med pack, pick these up, now I have two med packs. I want to make it so instead we have like a stack of two med packs. You know, I think you know what I mean. However, we have an issue currently when we go to use an item where if we are on the client, we go through and make a call to the server, passing in the item subclass we want to use. Well, the problem is you can cheat this by calling functions. Well, so let's say you make a cheat, you inject your DLL. Well, inside that DLL, you can go through and you can actually call certain functions. So if you wanted to, you could get the function pointer, call it for server underscore use item, and pass in your own made up subclass of whatever item you want. So let's say you had a, uh, you wanted to cheat yourself some med packs. You could bind that to a key, and every time you press F2, you know, you're technically telling the server, hey, I, I just used a med pack. And the problem is, in this current situation, that would work. So you would have, you know, a vulnerability there. So what I wanted you to do is change it up a bit so that way we're only going to use an item if it exists on the server as well. So the way we do that is we loop through our current inventory array. So for f item data item in inventory items, I'm just going to do it by reference for to save a little bit of memory. Since we're not going to have to create a copy of the structure each time we compare. Now I want to check if item dot item class is equal to the item subclass. If that is true, I want to use the item and simply return because we have no use, well, to do anything else with it. So that's going to take care of that for us. So let's just confirm that everything still works, which it should, and go from there. Already, well, we got to actually get ourselves on the client first. There we go. Close it, and we're still good to go. All right, so now that that works, so we still have a slight problem. So technically, uh, I actually scratch that. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be fixed. So never mind. You can ignore uh, what I was saying. So this should really take care of any issues we have in regards to cheating. If we need to expand on this more, we can. So I want to use this as an opportunity since we're on a short video to discuss what the validate function actually kind of does. So let's say we have this logic in our validate. So we return true if the item is found and we return false otherwise. So what's going to happen here? Well, when we try to call the server RPC, Let's say we do find the item. If we do, this is all going to run. It's going to find it. We're going to use it. And we return true. Meaning, great. Oh, sorry. We actually don't want to use it, though. And we return true. Perfect. And if we're going to go that route, that allows us to simplify this implementation by simply using it. So the way this works, we call the validate. We loop through. We find the item. Perfect. Because this returned true, that allows for the implementation to run. If it returns false, meaning the item has not been found, what it does is it kicks the client who found or who returned false or whoever requested the val whoever tried to make the server RPC, it kicks them out of the server. So it's going to just kick that client out. And then it's not even going to run the validate. So this is a way to prevent cheat protection. Like if you have some sort of way to detect a very obvious cheat that, you know, might that's not going to happen by accident then you would want to use your validate function to kick that client out of the server because you know hey the only way that this is possible is by cheating so we want to get rid of this guy so that's how you would handle that however i don't want to just in case something gets out of sync for example or the user spams the use key before the server has a chance to really go through an update or something properly or just whatever they pick, I don't know, just any scenario. I don't want to kick them out of the server. Instead, I just want to make it so they can use that they, um, 
they can go through and use the item on themselves, assuming we allow that in the actual item itself specifically. But I don't want to kick them out because I want them to be able to uh, stay in the server. Instead, the server's just not going to do anything. So the server itself is that has authority over the stats, that's not going to change. So the value of their hunger or their health is going to be correct regardless of if they, you know, they use an item that doesn't actually exist, so to speak. So that's going to pretty much take care of all that. So anyways, hopefully that was a okay explanation. I, I don't know if it was or not, but anyways, that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one for as little as a dollar. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.